The NFL trade deadline isn't as exciting as the NBA or even the MLB, but this year was special. A record 10 trades were completed and multiple big names were exchanged leading up to the day too. Somehow though, there still were some players and franchises that should have joined the drama, but they didn't. And with the dust now settled, we'll take a look at them. Starting with number nine, Jerry Judy and Kerry Hamler. The Broncos aren't exactly a side looking for an entire rebuild, so they weren't in a full sell mode. That said, their intentions became clear of what they wanted after that deal with Miami, including Bradley Chubb. With the Broncos looking for a selection of picks instead of a star linebacker, it was a surprise that they didn't trade the pair of receivers, Jerry Judy and Kerry Hamler. It would have been a no-brainer in an ineffective season for the Broncos, considering their names popped up in most trade rumors. As far as Judy is concerned, he would have fetched the Broncos at least a second round pick because he's a big name. Claypool got the Steelers a second round pick, so it's not insane to believe that Judy would have gotten that much too. Hamler's not been explosive, but he has a fair upside too, and that's why it was a surprise to see the Broncos not get rid of both in exchange for picks. Maybe the plan is to turn the season around. Moving on to number eight, Brandon Cooks. This one was quite surprising too because it was obvious that the Texans were looking for just about any suitor in the market for Cooks. He has a cap hit with more than $26 million in 2023 and the Texans won't be looking to compete this season or the next and the veteran wide receiver is still valuable enough considering he's coming off two back-to-back thousand-yard -back seasons. The Cowboys were leading the chase at one point and wanted to swap with their Texan neighbors, but the sticking point was the $18 million guarantee in 2023. So the cap hit proved problematic because the Texans wanted to unload the expense and any suitor to absorb most of his salary but couldn't find a landing spot. After that, at number seven, Elijah Moore. Another trade that was a given due to sporting issues rather than financial was Elijah Moore. His lack of chemistry with Zach Wilson and the lack of touches on the offense was Moore's biggest problem, and he told the franchise that he wanted out. Now, Moore's talent has never been in doubt. After that fantastic rookie season, it was obvious that the Jets would get a huge return from getting rid of Moore because his impact on any team would be massive. Plus, the Jets didn't have many sporting reasons to keep Moore because, thanks to another star rookie, Garrett Wilson, and the veteran Corey Davis, they're doing just fine. But the New York side decided that the 5-3 and three start to the season wasn't good enough especially with some concerns over their passing offense. The injury to Brees Wilson would have played a part in the Jets convincing Moore to stay, and that's probably why they weren't entertaining trade calls for Moore. On to number six, the Los Angeles Rams. Surprisingly, the Los Angeles Rams remained so quiet on deadline day. We get that keeping Akers, despite how surprising that is, and we'll get to that later, was something of an activity, but not bringing in any player, given how strong their rivals have gotten, was truly shocking. Their targets, McCaffrey playing for the 49ers, destroyed the Rams on Sunday and was involved in three touchdowns. And there were still many moves ready to be made by the Rams in the market, but they just didn't budge. Daryl Henderson's running game has been very ineffective and rates second lowest, not to mention the obvious lack of depth of wide receivers behind Cooper Cup. Also, the major struggles in their offensive line are set to cost them, again, because they have the defense to be a major threat. But this inactivity on trade deadline day could be very costly. Coming in at number five, the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals had major concerns regarding their depth at both wide receiver and cornerback. While no one can doubt the talent of their trio, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd at wideout, and the trio of Chidobe Awuzie, Mike Hilton, and Eli Apple at the corner, both the positions were empty after the top three. However, Chase is set to miss the next few games, and Awuzie's just been ruled out for the entire season. Apple's struggles with his hamstring injuries will hurt the Bengals more than they expected, and the decision not to add depth will cost them big time. They haven't been known for making major trades in the last few seasons, but maybe a change in strategy was the need of the hour because their AFC North rivals, the Ravens, improved quite a bit. And it isn't helpful because the Bengals are doing all the chasing. All they can do is hope and pray that Chase remains fit. At number four, the Green Bay Packers. No one came up with a better answer to Josh Allen and the Bills than the Packers, and that's a huge compliment to their fantastic defense. It has been why they've remained in games this season, and it won't be a cause for concern for the remainder of the season either. The problem for the Packers has been at wide receiver. Letting go of Devontae Adams means that they don't have a decent target for Aaron Rodgers, and while the likes of Alan Lazard and Romeo Dobbs are doing the best they can, they're still not good enough to fill at higher level. Given the fact that there were many wide receivers available, not going for one was a huge blunder by the Packers. And to add insult to injury, their rivals, the Bears and the division-leading Vikings, improved 
improved, and not making a few minor tweaks could be fatal to their season. Into the top three with Alvin Kamara. The New Orleans Saints weren't too keen on keeping Alvin Kamara post-deadline, but they'll have to contend with him on the side for the time being. Kamara had revealed his intention of staying, but there were many interesting landing spots because he was already the best running back available with McCaffrey dealt. Even the Bills were interested at one point, and that's why it's a huge shock that he wasn't traded by the Saints, considering the overwhelming demand for the 27-year-old. They could have gotten an amazing package for him, and there would have been plenty of suitors, too, so we don't know why it didn't go through. Maybe Kamara convinced the front office? Maybe the Saints felt they could remain in the hunt for the NFC South. Up next at number two, Kareem Hunt. Everyone had their money on Kareem Hunt getting traded before the trade deadline. It felt like a given for the Browns, especially considering Hunt had requested a trade in the offseason as he looks to get his hands on an extension before hitting free agency. On the other hand, Dearness Johnson's performance last season indicates that the Browns had more than a capable backup for Nick Chubb. They're also sitting at a 3-5, and five, so it almost felt like a given that the Browns would get rid of Kareem Hunt, but it just wasn't meant to be. The Browns were after a fourth-round pick in exchange for Hunt, and as it turns out, no team was willing to agree to that demand. It's somewhat surprising that the Browns didn't give in to their demands, but it is also a shock that the 49ers received a fifth round pick for Jeff Wilson Jr., but the Browns couldn't get one for Hunt. So now, Hunt will potentially leave for nothing at the end of the 2022 campaign because an extension seems unlikely with the Browns. Finally at number one, Cam Akers. Compare this to the Hunt deal and it seems even more of a surprise because at the very least, Hunt has continued playing for the Browns. That's certainly not the case for Cam Akers. He had a falling out with coach Sean McVay and the Rams, which meant the franchise had been looking to get rid of him since early October. Even though the Rams are struggling, they seemed adamant enough to get rid of the former second round pick, but failed to do so. It's outrageous how no side went for Akers because many franchises were looking to add a running back to their roster. Not sure what went wrong there because we believe some teams would have gone all out to get Akers at any given price. And now, Akers will need to mend that relationship. Even the Los Angeles side would need to do that because this is not the time to hold a grudge. That's a wrap for this video. Which of these moves would you have wanted to happen? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.